Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make frozen fudge pops and this is what it looks like. This has such a wonderfully deep chocolate flavor and a velvety smooth texture. I think of it as a frozen chocolate pudding on a stick. So this recipe is going to make four uh, fudge pops. So of course, if you want eight, you could easily just double the recipe. Each one of my molds, just for reference, holds about a third of a cup, 80 mils. And if you don't have popsicle molds, you could still make this. Just use some uh, paper cups and then just have some, uh, you know, popsicle sticks, just as good. So, as I said, this is really just an eggless chocolate pudding. You will need a medium-sized saucepan. And the deep chocolate flavor comes from both unsweetened cocoa powder, plus we're going to add some semi-sweet chocolate as well. So, first thing you will need is two tablespoons, 14 grams of unsweetened cocoa powder. Now, you could use either the Dutch processed or the uh, just regular unsweetened. And always remember when you're making anything chocolate like this, the, the uh, type of chocolate you use, both in the cocoa powder and your semi-sweet, that's going to determine how, how chocolatey your fudge pops will be. So now we do need a thickener, so you will need one tablespoon, which is nine grams of cornstarch. And then I'm just adding a pinch of salt an eighth of a teaspoon, kind of. Now what we're going to do is take, now you will need one cup, which is 240 milliliters of milk. Now, depending on how rich and creamy you want your fudge pops, you could use a whole full fat milk, or you could even use a reduced fat. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a little milk to kind of form a paste with that cornstarch and the cocoa powder. So just pour it a little in and then use your whisk. Now along with the milk, you will also need a quarter of a cup, which is 60 mils of a heavy cream or heavy whipping cream. Again, I mean, there's two types of heavy or whipping cream in the States, the heavy and then just regular whipping cream, depending on how rich and creamy you want your fudge pops to be is the type of cream you use. So once that's all, you got a nice smooth paste. Then I'm going to add the rest of that milk and my cream. And then, of course, we need some sugar. I'm adding a third of a cup, 65 grams of granulated white sugar. Whisk that in. And then for our chocolate, you will need a quarter of a cup, which is about one and a half ounces or 45 grams. Um, now, you could use, uh, I'm using a semi-sweet chocolate that I've finely chopped. You know, you could use a bittersweet, you could even use a milk chocolate, and yes, you can use chocolate chips if, you, if that's all you have in the house. So, what we're going to do is put this on the heat. We want it medium heat, and stirring it every once in a while, we want to bring this up to a simmer. You'll start to see some bubbles around the edges. Okay, so now you can just start to see the bubbles. So what we're going to do, if you have to adjust your heat, you, you don't want to cook this too much. We need to cook that cornstarch because that will, uh, if you don't, if you took this off the heat right now, that cornstarch, you might have a bit of a, like a starchy flavor to our fudge pups, which we don't want. So we're going to cook this a couple minutes and that will, the cornstarch will also thicken our um, mixture here. So whisk constantly. Okay, so it's been cooking a couple minutes. It's thickened up. I'm going to take it off the heat. 
And then we're going to add one teaspoon, four grams of pure vanilla extract for flavoring. I always think, you know, vanilla and chocolate go so well together. And then I'm just adding a half a tablespoon, seven grams of butter. And that'll, you know, really smooth out our pudding. Give it a nice help with that rich velvety texture. And we're done. If you want it, I mean, we're going to freeze it. You could put it in the fridge and just have a chocolate pudding if you want that. So, I'm going to transfer this to a container because I, I'd make a mess if I tried to pour <laughs> into my molds from the pot. So. Sure, I get it all. Okay. And then I'm just going to pour to my molds. Leave a little room at the top because it will expand. And then you know, four to six hours from now, you will have delicious fudge pops. Okay. There we go. And then with this one, I just put these right on the top like that. Now, if you were using paper cups, what you would do is put your, um, the pudding into your paper cups and then put this in the, in, them in the freezer. I usually like, even if I'm using this, put it on a, a tray, makes it a lot easier. And then after about maybe 45 minutes, check them. And if they're starting to really freeze, then put your popsicle sticks in. And then, you know, four to six hours, you will have frozen fudge pops. So when we come back, we will try one. So here is our frozen fudge pops. Now, how do you remove the uh, popsicles from the mold? What I typically do is just run the bottom of the mold under hot water. You could get a, a bowl of hot water and, and then put the whole thing, the whole mold in there. But usually I'm just like getting one out or two out. So that's how I do it. So there we have it. Doesn't that look wonderful? I think these taste way better than what you buy at the store. You know, you can, the good thing about when you make your own, you can use a really good cocoa powder and really good chocolate, and then you'll have a really good tasting frozen fudge pot. And they are velvety smooth in texture. You will really want to make these. So until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Mm -hmm.